So, uh, we're here to share some of our experiences around the preparation for uh, going forward uh, for using my knowledge map. Um, so, we put quite a lot of effort into, it was a very long lead-in time to preparing, um, and that started off with um, a systematic review of the literature in order to support, um, support our business case for going forward for such a big change from paper um, assessment. So the review, the systematic review, um, was really to look at primary research articles um, that were published between those two uh, dates, 2001 and 2014, um, to look at what, to give us an idea of what the challenges might be, um, as well as making a business case for this. Um, so we looked at things for all the clinical practice assessment. Um, so it covered um, not only nursing and midwifery, but also medical students and um, uh, radiography, MMAPs uh, as well, um, so that we could get as much learning from that as, uh, as possible. So um, it was quite a big uh, undertaking. Um, Almost 1,500 abstracts were screened by um, three of us who conducted the systematic review, um, but we fairly quickly were able to exclude a lot of those um, articles. Um, but we screened 99 full text articles, um, and they were screened um, by, by the three of us um, involved in that. So we ended up with 23 papers. Um, and those papers um, range between 2002, um, but most were 2008 and afterwards. And I think that just tells us the journey of how technology has developed. The earlier studies were, were um, focused on things like you know, the palm held devices, you remember those? Um, and how far we've come from, from those. But the, the learning from those earlier studies was still relevant. Um, because it was the, the, the ethos of electronic devices in practice and that mobility. Um, and this just gives you the breakdown. Most of the studies were done in the UK um, uh, and US. Um, when we reviewed all of them, we picked out three main themes. So this was around information for healthcare practice, knowledge and skill acquisition, and reflection and learning in practice. So information for healthcare practice. So what, what the studies found was that the students um, used the devices when they were out on placement for looking up information, um, to access information about conditions, about um, uh, drug interactions and such like. So it was more than um, just the assessment of clinical practice. The knowledge and skill acquisition was one of the key themes and that was around um, mentors assessing the students in clinical practice, so able to assess um, the students' knowledge base within the practice setting, so that theoretical application to practice, and also um, the students' skills in terms of their clinical skills and application of those clinical skills in practice. But the students also used it for reflection and learning and practice. So we were particularly interested in preparing for the final two bullet points, you know, that um, assessing clinical skills in practice and also assessing, uh, allowing students the opportunity to reflect on their clinical practice. So when we were looking at what device, what, what product, those were the things that we, that we wanted to, to ensure um, the, the product would, um, would allow us to do. So there were lots of challenges in the papers that were presented uh, and when I hand over to Fiona, please bear these challenges in mind because, um, what do they say, um, was it failure to prepare, is to That's prepare true. to fail, isn't it? So actually these challenges we identified up front so we could be able to prepare. So getting permission to use the devices in clinical practice was a challenge from the literature. Um, you know, some places were concerned around confidentiality and um, use of mobile devices where you're not meant to use mobile devices. Um, so concerns over um, the security of patients, but also the student data as well, um, who would have access to that. The risk of transmission of infection. Is it any different to having a paper 
uh, booklet, you know, which would carry infection as well. Um, the lack of skill base and reluctance to accept, so that fear of change and fear of technology. And the time for users to bond with their devices, and I thought that was quite a nice uh, little statement that came out of the, the literature. So some of the technical challenges that they found were things like battery life, you know, making sure that um, there was enough uh, uh, charging points and we're just coming up in the lift today. There's a colleague who was travelling down from Sheffield and her, her stuff's already out of juice. Um, so, you know, these are challenges <laughs> that, uh, that uh, are very real in clinical practice. Intermittent internet access. Now, this was an absolute for us, you know, Fiona will show you the geographical area that we cover, um, and it's huge. We cover all the islands um, in Scotland as well as North East. And, you know, often, you know, there's no Wi-Fi access. It's not even on sat -nav or anything like that. Um, so we needed a product that would allow students to access their um, assessment uh, tool offline and that would sync with uh, the, you know, the, the, their device online the next time they came in Wi-Fi. And that was an absolute deal breaker for us. Um, and other, uh, other companies that we looked to weren't able to provide that. Um, and my knowledge map does that. Screens too small and students with disabilities were all challenges, but I think those are challenges that fewer and more in terms of um, things that are you know, reasonably easy to overcome um, and probably easier than, than using paper. Um, and damage loss uh, and theft of devices, um, but you know, how many paper um, assessment documents have been left on buses, uh, lost, coffee spilled on them or whatever, I don't know if anybody steals any paper documents, you know, who else would want uh, somebody else's assessment booklet. <laughs> Um, so that, that's the kind of information that we gained from the systematic review and that helped us make the business case and prepare for the implementation um, and also help us choose the right product um, for going forward. So I'm going to hand over to um, Fiona now. And that's actually what actually happened at this stage. Karen, as uh, the um, <coughs> associate head, um, had done all the groundwork and had the systematic literature review. So setting the scene, what was happening in RGU at the time is we knew that we were looking for a digital device, a subject description to do our um, student clinical assessment. But behind the scenes in Scotland as a whole, we were pulling together a tool called the Ongoing Achievement Record Scotland, which is a tool where all the universities within Scotland School of Nursing came together and pulled this tool. And I have been part of that work in another role that I was doing in clinical practice. And about that same time, I came into role as a senior lecturer in e-learning. And part of the e-learning strategy that I have is, was a two-pronged attack to take the school paper free for clinical assessments and for um, academic assessments. So the first year we'd done the grade mark with the pedagogy that was underpinning it with the quick mark settings. And the second year was going to be the uh, ongoing achievement record Scotland. Now the first year went very well. A few um, issues of working with individuals and things that's normal. And then we came onto the tool which we thought would be similar. But the problem we have in Scotland, as you can see, the geographical area that we cover is immense. Especially the top islands you'll see of Orkney and Shetland, where we're not just talking about poor Wi-Fi, we're talking areas where they, I'm sure somebody has a little dynamo and a little uh, bike <laughs> at the back trying to pedal along to, to make it a bit better at times, but their intermittent service was huge. We also have a lot of community courses on our um, uh, at the School of Nursing and Midwifery. So uh, many of our practitioners are community practitioners who are in areas where I don't know if you've been on a GP practice lately, but the BT uh, hub that's in there belongs to the GP practice and not to the nurses. So that's the problem. And at this time, I was put out, if you're ever looking for, if I get paid off for the School of Nursing and looking for a secret shopper, I am your person. <laughs> Karen had me going to these conferences and she was talking and they saw her as the head of school, but I was doing the backward 
um, actually asking the questions that we needed to. And my knowledge map did stand out. And what stood out was the real Wi-Fi and being able to work offline. That was the, the crux of it for us. Because we could not guarantee that these students that we had in clinical placement in the geographical <coughs> challenges we had could not access it. We, want, what we, we had this vision and we wanted to have you know, student prepared for the digital era. We know about the e-health agenda. We want our students to come out of the course being e-learning, e-IT literate. We needed that. So we, we knew we were looking for that. We wanted the access to, for the students for external examiners, for uh, the practice teachers, the joy of the, the um, practice learning staff at a distance being able to go <coughs> way in from one area to another. Now, Many of you will not be thinking, how's that a problem? But if you live somewhere like Banff, which they usually do need interpreters and, and subtitles <laughs> when they do any programmes on them, and only something like 30, 40 miles away in places like P Fraserburgh and Peterhead, it's not that easy to go down to. So they can remotely access and support students. So that was what we were looking for. We were looking at the tablet or computer uh, um, issues and the reasonable adjustments. The timeliness, being able to give feedback to students very quickly um, and be able to talk to students. And about that quality of feedback, that's really important. And about the personal tutor engagement, the staff student liaison committee was full of students saying to us, well, we never hear about a personal tutor when we go out in placement. And we kind of had a rule that that was the practice education staff, so we thought we could reach in using this digital um, assessment. We wanted to look at the analytics. We knew from Shan, we'd started networking. Shan was saying, oh, there's analytics on it. And of course, I'm very geeky. It's started in this role. And I was like, oh, so we could measure the standards. We could see if our students were actually getting their initial midway placement. And we were looking for innovative technology to enhance that um, area. And about a secure student experience, we did hear of students leaving their um, Quads, we called it at the time, paper, and the other members of staff, including any domestic staff, could just read it at any point. They're supposed to be in a draw, that wasn't happening. And the students, you know, if they were having a cause for concern on any issues, anybody was able to read that. <coughs> we wanted confidentiality um, and also left on the bus. I don't know how many students leave their um, paper documents on the bus. And we were looking at the methodology, trying to preserve how we work within the school for academic staff, for practice staff personal tutors and for students. And most of all, we're all driven by the NSS results. We were looking to have the clinical assessment feedback. Now, our results had already gone up with great mark in the work we'd done last year. So if we were going to build on this, we knew it was possible to do that, so we were interested. This is what the, the implementation plan, and, and we've been asked here to get you ready, and this is what we did. Karen was part of the same group with myself, the Dean and IT. Then we had this massive group of um, the clinical assessment and implementation plan and an operational group. Now, the first time we turned up, there was about 50 people there. Now, that was people from data management. We had people from um, reasonable adjustments from the disability services. We had clinical practitioners from every discipline. We had students, post-reg, pre-reg. It was a massive route and quickly we saw the error of our ways because we all had different agendas. So I broke them down into practice learning, that was about how we were going to look at it in clinical practice. Risk assessment to look at the risks and that was driven by NHS Grampian and, and I let our partners lead that. So the lead nurse within those areas <coughs> led that work. Pre-reg nursing came from the, the senior lecturer in pre-reg nursing and that went in midwifery. Post-reg, because it was a slightly different, and I led the information technology. But I was on all groups so that there was cross-pollination. As the groups start to, to, to work, the project itself, we used an action research approach, that's what we were doing. And we're still in these cycles, so basically we took through a uh, return to nurse practice, um, first of all and we took 30 students through, we um, implemented it by acting on it, we observed what was happening, we were reaching in, because there was only 30 students, you know, I was phoning Orkney and saying, how's that student getting on, which we wouldn't normally plan to do long term, but we were following the students, the students were contacting, we set up a helpline, we set up a, an email address, and we were able to respond very quickly, and, and that was very positive because I think that's actually what has actually indicated that this is going to be a success. Then we reflected on it. We came back in. I brought the students in. I, I got all their experiences. Now, it was interesting because I had 
there were, I, I think I put like a SWOT analysis on the wall, you know, of what was good, what wasn't so good, and all the rest of it. And first of all, what wasn't so good, the students were there with their stickies. But when I actually read it, what they were saying wasn't so good was good, because they were saying things like, she said, um, um, I found it, my mentor really didn't understand it, and I didn't understand it. And then I said, right, if it's going to not be so good, let's have a think about it. Give us a solution-focused approach to this. So all of a sudden, the sticky started to change, and they started taking off not so good, putting it on to the good, but with the solution that they had actually achieved. So it's interesting when you unpick. Many of the things that came back were things like, um, it's taught me to be more digital um, uh, literate and using online back at banking and things like that. So in actual fact, when we actually looked across the piece, again, I took it back to those working groups and unpicked what the student feedback was. So for example, when I took it to the information technology, we changed some of the guides. When I, um, there's things on practice learning. Now, an example that was quite funny was, um, nobody in practice supported me, but Muriel came in and she was really good. Now, Muriel's the practice educator who was supporting her and had been in nearly every day to support her. So sometimes it was the student's perception of how it was happening for them. And it was new and it was all about, you know, we don't want to be the guinea pigs. So that's what we were doing. This was the overall project plan. We're still in the middle of this. So you can see June 2015, we set up the steering group. And all those little dots are months. So you can see in the beginning, when you get ready, you're going to have a long period and nothing really happens. And then we took the February 16, we took the return to nurse practice. Again, there was a bit of a hiatus because we wanted to get that feedback. Remember, going back to that circle, we were trying to get that reflective feedback both from the students, the lecturers, and from the practice educators and the mentors. And then we fed that back into the project again. We were three more months and then we took the big cohort through. We just took them through in June, September 2015, we took 240 students on to it. They are currently out there. The first weeks were mayhem. Oh, where's my password? This is rubbish. I don't like this. We had all that. All change management you expect. Um, the e-learning advisor, Gavin, I think probably Sid and um, will verify. He was, I think he was in a dark room with wheel noises because he just had never <laughs> seen so many emails coming in. And I was going, right, let's have a theme about this. You know, what's coming in? Well, it's a password. Well, that's not difficult. So what we did is we started making, which I think, um, I think you'll be pleased to hear, we started making auto-populated almost responses of, if you've lost your password, this is what you do. And that actually saved us a lot of um, manpower, resources, and the students got a bit of experience, so we got a bit wiser. And in fact, the last two weeks we haven't had hardly any emails, and we actually think something bad's happened out there, because we feel really, you know, you, and it is like watching a baby, um, I can assure you, it's like watching a baby, are they sleeping? You know, when they're up, you're, you're really upset about it because they never sleep. And when they sleep, are they dead? So we're, we're actually, that's where we are at this point. These 240 students are out there and we are waiting and thinking, hope this is okay. To take the project on a bit, what was really interesting is we had a meeting just recently and we were looking about the rest of the digitalisation. And the one that we went to the master's um, programme and we took this to validation and we got a commendation for our e-learning platform, which we demonstrated um, at this on. So we're totally, that was from the NMC, so we're totally delighted with ourselves that the work we're doing with the e-learning in the school as a whole. And I do think that's attributed to, 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 go, to going through with this, um, with my knowledge map. The other part of that was when we went to the next meeting, um, it was to take it to the community teams. And I've worked with them and I was like, this is not going to happen. This is going to be really challenging because I am a health visitor background, so I can say this, they will dig their heels in and this might be more difficult. But um, Heather, who is the, um, the course lead, who is, as you can see, part of the groups as well, she's on that post reg. So they've been with us since the beginning, which I, I, I would say helped. And she actually just went into the meeting and said, yeah, that's fine. And when she came back and told me, I was like, you're joking. You mean you're just going with it? Yeah. So you can see from this, if you're getting ready, you'll build up momentum. So you can see in the beginning, in June 2015, big gap, then February, smaller gap, June, and now you can see we're away to take the master's programme, return to nurse practice, and we'll have September 16 on it. So by that time, you know, we have about 
just less than probably about 800 students in the school, we will have nearly all our students on it. And that has actually taken much, you know, lo longer than we first anticipated. That was working with our partners in practice. But it also actually gains momentum. It will get faster and faster. As you get more confident, the team gets more confident, and also the, the practice education staff. That was where I would say was our biggest challenge. So, ready feedback and feed forward. What can I feed back to you for you to get ready? Failure to prepare and prepare to fail. Absolutely. Can not stress that enough. And I know that Glasgow, Cali and other places that would have the ongoing achievement in Scotland came at the same time as us. Now, they went out and they put a few paper copies onto the tool to practice and they also gave them their paper tool, but you know what's going to happen, don't you? They just went to the paper version and ignores the digital. You have to make a commitment. You have to say, this is the plan. And I had a strategic plan and, and um, Shan will tell you what my plans are like. I, I'm totally at the risk assessment, so I've got 30 page documents of how I do things. And that's just, the, I like project management. So having somebody who likes project management is absolutely key. Who understands the whole picture. They're taking in your partners in practice. You're taking in your, your um, people with the technology that you work with. And don't assume that that will happen because that's probably one of the hardest challenges. At the moment, this project sits alone and not embedded into RGU. We are at this point. And, and we are, although we have support, it was a project. We had to almost go take a, a leap of faith. Now other schools around the faculty are looking at us because they want it too. So you have to take a massive leap of faith to say you want to do this. The literature section that Karen had done, we're going to revisit that. You will see that is so essential. It will give you guidance, it will give you clues. Talk, talking to Shan was very important. I was talking to Cardiff, I was talking to everywhere else that was using them. And I was also looking at um, other companies and, what the issues were, to see that if we could feed it into the project. Firewall testing was absolutely imperative. It was quite interesting, during the project, NHS Grampian had a, a bit of a, a blip that with blocking something, I think something had uh, triggered, and all of the whole of YouTube and all those areas went down, my knowledge map kept going. And we couldn't believe it. We were all going like, has it gone down? And somebody was up north and going, no, oh, no, we can get on there. It's not a problem. <laughs> so, you know, firewall testing. I worked with um, the IT services for the NHS Grampian. And we went everywhere. I mean, Gavin and myself went up to one of the hospitals we had um, where iPhones, iPads, we even had the, one of the lead nurses' uh, Kindles, which I, I, I don't know when she had it, and I can't, I'll never forget Gavin's face when he turned and he went like this, and it was running on this Kindle. So, you know, the digital devices don't have to be fancy digital devices that you're going to use with this. You can use um, most digital devices, I'll tell you a bit about that in a minute. So it's really important you firewall test, you check where you're going and all the rest of it. Partners in practice, I cannot stress. This is probably where I had, I was definitely in a room with the real noises. The practice educators act as gatekeepers and I know Shan had the same issue as well. And I'd already heard that from Shan so I was ready and I immediately brought my partners in practice in with us to work on the project. And that is really interesting because now I hear them singing and singing and you know, supporting us. And if you haven't got that buy-in, you're working up, it's almost like swimming upstream constantly. And as you can see, that permission to use came in from Carmen's literature. I worked with Delta, which was Department of Enhancement and Learning Teaching and Assessment, to look at the pedagogical aspect of it. E-learning, as I said, was part of the wider ITNS, looking at disability services to see if we can actually look at employing reasonable adjustments right from the beginning. Looking at study support and asking them, you know, would students be able to come in and get additional support? Because some students do take longer and they may be embarrassed to say, well, I don't know actually how to use a digital device at all. And actually, we, we made sure that was there for them. We talk to students. It's interesting. Never forget your students because they come out with wonderful things. We discovered from our students that 95% of our um, students had digital devices and I think 80 something were willing to use their own devices. So that actually gives you a bit of a paradigm shift of what you're working for. Unlike Shan, we were not as lucky to have digital devices. We had to go with computers to begin with. And because we were not wanting to be seen to discriminate with other areas, 
we, um, what we said was, if you have a digital device, you can use it. Now, I've just looked at the informatics this week, and of the 240, 158 are using their own digital devices. So that kind of correlates with, 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 with um, what you know, we were seeing. Um, we were looking at, you know, about, there's a lot of complaints with HSE type, you know, we have, you know, repetitive live stream and all that. And peers all, all matter, you know, talk to the, the personal tutors and also everybody trying to get them feel engaged and you just didn't stop me in the corridor and ask about my knowledge about all this because you have to be passionate and you have to have that passion and you have to have that drive, even on the days where Gavin's in the dark room with all the emails coming at him and he's worrying, you've still got to say, let's look at the wider vision. Monthly, we had these multi-agency meetings, you know, taken back. Now that these groups, despite the groups being so big in the, the, the beginning, those groups are not so big now. And the group's probably down to a manageable 30. So we are really back to meeting together and being able to control it in one room. And we, we video conference. Video conferences where other partners such as the, um, the AGAs, uh, AGIs and... Um, as I said, or the So you've got to be able to be flexible with those meetings so that people who can't come in every day, because they can't come in, you know, that's 12 meetings a year, that's a great undertaking. So BCing in did make a difference. The risk assessments. One of the things that came out of the risk assessment from that risk assessment group was there may be lack of computers in the wars. And that is exactly what there is. You've got some surgical areas where they've got uh, one PC and they've got patient health record, they've got continuing professional development, they've got the EKSF, which is the career reviewing. They also have um, CPD on that, and now we're asking students to, to assess it. And it's sometimes at the middle of this, right in the middle of a ward. And what if you've got a student with a problem? How do you get around that? So that came out of our risk assessment, and we were able to get ready for that and front load it and prepare that. Some of the other challenges was that dig digital literacy and fear, and if you can see that in 2011, the car and front loaded there, that definitely was one of the biggest things. And it was interesting because my perception of the project would be that it would be the young ones would be fine, and it would be the older ones who would be difficult, you know, they'd find that challenging. But in actual fact, the young ones are used to this. And that doesn't mean that's digital literacy. What you find was the older ones had iPads and actually had more technology, you know, greater technology. So when we did the return to nurse practice, half of them had bought iPads for coming on the course. So the return to nurse practice really did well because they were an older age group that fancier devices and they were able to use that, right? And the app is the best compared to the computer side. The app is much simpler for them. However, at the moment, as I've said, with 158 on digital devices, that 240 cohort, most of them are on their iPhone, on a on uh, iPhone. Now I'm hoping it's the six because most of, if you look at the demographics of the uh, age of the nursing workforce, which is about 50 something, and for anything like me, I need my glasses, so I don't know how they're managing, but it seems to be happening. And again, I'm just hoping everything's fine. But it was with the first cohort, and I think you've got to sometimes take a step back. And the truth of the matter was, is the NNC standards have this, we have to have an issue within seven hours, a midway and a final. Now, we don't know what was happening there on the paper. That's the truth of the matter. And we know from students, and Sharon will share you her story, that the students are often getting that all done on the last day. Okay, that's the real world. So my partners in practice were going, well, that's terrible, that's just awful, that's not the NNC standards, that was the real world. And I see this as positive because I see that we can now action plan with that and actually say that, say, I don't know, 30%, 40% are not achieving the standards. Let's make an action plan next time get 25 and the following time, 20. So we can use those analytics to work in a positive manner with our partners in practice. Because the, the one thing the mentors on those groups, because remember with mentors and students involved in this, they said we don't want to be policed. You know, we, we, that big brother watching us is a big fear. So we promised them we wouldn't do that. And we actually now can go back to them and say, this is your argument to go back to senior management. You are not getting enough time to employ your role as a mentor. So that's really, that they actually have evidence to take that to say, we are struggling. So we use that in a positive. Yes. Yeah. 
So increasing the confidence of the technology encouraged me to use online banking now. That was the, that was the feedback we were getting from the students. The students felt much more confident um, than they did prior to it. However, we did get, we are, we are, why are we the guinea pigs? And um, not enough PCs on the board. But we remember, to go back to Karen, that was there in the beginning, that was there in the risk assessment, we were ready for that. So we were able to say, to be able to plan areas and um, to be able to talk to senior management. And what has happened in the background is there is digital devices coming. And um, there's 30 going into um, NHS Grampian to um, Forster Hill School, at uh, Forster Hill um, Hospital, and there's 170 coming if this project works. So we're already trying to target where the 30 go so that they, they do work and students get to use them so that we would hope to have some sort of digital device sitting on every board within NHS Grampian. So that's why we were working with our partners. Tabletop exercise, that was the biggest thing that was, and the best thing I did. What I did was I simulated a student's assessment. And we took, when, when I said to the team, this is what we're going to do, everybody's like, oh my God, what on earth is this? And what we did is we set up one of the IT labs and we took in, we brought a student, a mentor, a um, personal tutor, the course leader, the IT, the admin staff, and we simulated deploying the forms. The student went on. And then, and we actually found at that time, because we initially put the, the tools at the mentor side, that actually this wasn't a good exercise to do. And we actually delayed the project by six months and moved all the forms to the student side, did another table talk which went absolutely seamlessly. I'd recommend doing that table talk. It's such a good exercise. And we had lots of learning because all of a sudden the admin said, what do we do with this? And we had to have a big chat about it. So we had lots of exercises. The browser issues. Um, in an explorer they needed and this the tools need um, to have Firefox, Chrome or anything, but they needed it for um, patient records, so we had to have two browsers on the machines. ITNS easily did that. Helplines and emails, definitely have that, and preset those replies before you start. Storyline training guides, these are the ones you know you go on YouTube and you, you can re-pressurise your boiler yourself and it tells you how to do it. We, we've got training materials like that and the mentors love it, the students love it and the analytics. Use those analytics, they're really, really interesting. And that's how we got ready. Thank you very much. You've spent a lot of time talking about how you got the students organised, how you got practice organised. How did you take the academic staff along with you? Um, <clears throat> Remember, the, this is part of the e-learning strategy. So last year, we'd done a grade mark. So last year, I did a lot of work with the same action research with grade mark. Um, so th by this, this time, they knew this was coming. So first of all, they were ready for it. They, um, it was almost it was easier than, than, than anything because I'd done that work already with the grade mark work. So they were used to being in groups and they were brought back into the same groups again and we, we just employed that. So again, it was still the, the, um, the fear, um, digital literacy fear, um, having the training materials, bringing them in to, we did training sessions with them all, we did trainings with the student, we did training with the mentors, um, we did training um, with the, the academics, so we did them all different. And if you go to the storyline, the way that you do it, you go in and there's three people, there's a student picture, there's a mentor, and there's academic and there's admin. And the way you go in is you press the button that's for you. So the training guides are very specific to the academics. How can I get the grade off? How, where do I see if there's any problems? Where, where can I add anything? So really, everybody's looking for their own thing. The admin is like, how do I deploy the forms? The students are, how do I get my grade back? The mentors, how do I add the grade? So, the, the guides are very specific and they're, they're self-directed so they can, those that are not so digital literate can go off on their own. There's paper versions of it so they can work through it. And I, I'm a bit like that, sometimes I like to type this up and go like this, that's how I do it. So we've done lots of different ways with academics so, and talking to them, actually speaking to them. Did but any of them ever sabotage? Um, well, 
The, the grade mark, mark, yes. No, no, the grade mark. mark. The, you, yeah. you always have you always have people who are early adopters mm. and who are enthusiastic. And Fiona's obviously one of those early adopters and enthusiastic. And we've got lots of our staff, you know, are, are really keen to get on board and things like that. But we do have staff who are resistant to change. Like I'm sure, you know, you could probably name the people in your organisation as well. I might not go as far to say sabotage. But certainly um, put up a fair amount of resistance, mm -hmm. virginal and sabotage. And you know, we have to deal with that in the way that we would deal with any performance issues. Um, and, and we do. Um, but I think one of the key things that Fiona's done is you've taken the staff through in different groups and making sure that the different groups of staff's needs are met. And at the moment, we've not got the midwives through yet. Last week we had our school academic board and our lead midwife was saying, well I don't think we should go with this yet because, you know, the new midwifery standards are going to be coming out soon. I said, well, in three years time. There needs to be a compelling reason now because we know the, the advantages this has for our students. There has to be a compelling reason why not. And guess what? We're going. Yeah. And, it, and, and I think yeah. to reiterate that part of the, the grade mark work, you know, you know when you've done full circle with one of the members of staff who really did not want to go into using electronic marking, um, has managed to go through 60 scripts, you know, that there have been someone off in our team and she actually managed to do more scripts in less time and she said, please don't take this away. And that to me was the full circle. And when she said that, I was actually almost like to wait to get out the door and have a skip, you know, down the corridor to say, yes! Because I could see she got it. She got it. It was going to help her. This wasn't just about putting it digital and make it more complex. This was, remember, if I said, on, it was about the lean methodology. It was about employing better ways of working more efficiently and actually better quality at the same time. So I think once you sell that to them, that this is going to help you, this is not here to hinder you. I think that's a key message, isn't it? I'm going to move on to the next speaker from May.